what are the three most powerful cues, body language cues of leaders? Mm, okay, so this is the competence area of the spectrum, right? So when we talk about charisma, we talk about warmth, competence, charisma, and danger. Okay, so three body languages of leaders. Um, the example that I give that I really like to teach from is the Nixon-Kennedy presidential debate. Okay. Have you ever heard of this historical debate? We were not around for yes. this debate, so I'd be shocked if you'd seen it. So we want to be in the high, uh, there you go. the high charisma. There you go. Yes, we, we want to be Sweet doing spot. those cues all the time. That's right. We want to be in the star. So right now we're, you're talking about competence. You just asked me about leaders. So leaders typically are high competence and they can go into warmth when they want to. A high competence and charisma. Right. Are, are there high competence and high warmth? Yes, yes exactly. Gotcha. Right. So highly competent cues, if you know that you're warm and you need to dial up competence to hit the sweet spot, these are some cues that will help you. Give and the, my favorite is from the Nixon president, Nixon Kennedy presidential debate. So this, have you heard about this debate before? It's kind of remind me. Okay, yes. <laughs> you're like actually yes, I watched yeah. it on the History Channel last night. Was it? I mean, maybe you mentioned this before, but isn't one of them was angry or something? I can't remember what happened, but I, I, yeah. so this is this is why I like this story is because it created a puzzle. And I like puzzles. Mm -hmm. So here's what happened. Uh, during this part in U.S. history, uh, Nixon and Kennedy were running for president, and about half the population watched the presidential debate on television, yeah. and about half the population listened to the debate on the radio. Everyone who watched the debate was sure that Kennedy won, and everyone who listened to the debate was sure that Nixon won. Wow. And it was the first time where there was a discrepancy between the winners, the perceived winners. Because one sounded competent, the other one looked warm. One sounded like a leader and one looked like a leader. Ooh. When you match them together, that's the sweet spot. That's the star. Okay. That's the star. Exactly. So, so one sounded like a leader. So Nixon sounded like a leader. He had really good vocal power, but he looked like a loser. Mm -hmm. And I hate to use that word, but he himself said in his memoirs, he believes he lost that entire presidential election based on the first few seconds of that debate. First few seconds. He himself said that. What he what happened? Okay. So he was, all, he was kind of like the Shark Tank guy, trying to buy back competence he, and warmth at the same time. He gave time. away his competence in the first few seconds of the debate. So anyone who saw it went, oh, no, 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 no. This guy is not a winner. And this was before they even spoke. So in the first 30 seconds of the debate, neither of them speak. You see them on camera. And if you were watching, you saw, wow, Nixon looks so weak. And here's why. What most people don't know is that Nixon had just injured his knee mm -hmm. on the campaign trail mm -hmm. and he had been in the hospital for the week. So he came in with a bandaged knee and a fever. Kennedy had been tanning. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he like, was like a nice suit and everything. He was ready to go. And also a kind of funny thing is the debate was in black and white and um, Nixon's suit was too brown. It blended into the background. So mm. we, I talk about color psychology at the very end of the book, colors, and so that was an issue one that he didn't pop as much on the black and white. Okay, yeah. so he shows up and he's sitting in what's called the runner's stance. The runner's stance is when someone, so you know runners before they win a race, they like go yeah. into the crunch position one leg back. We know this as a readiness position. Universally across cultures, if someone's about to run away from us, they will get into this position, right? Like they're literally about to run away. It's why sprinters start a race like yeah. that. Well, Nixon spent the first 30 seconds of the debate in that position. Because of his knee. Because of like, his knee. He was in pain. He was trying to like just. He was nursing it. Yeah. But it made it look like he was about to run out on us. That's from a, just a quick nonverbal perspective. The first impression was, where is he going? Even though people didn't consciously realize it, he looked not planted, and we don't like leaders who aren't gonna stay with us. Mm -hmm. Whereas Kennedy, on the other hand, he had a, a really uh, nice, uh, relaxed cross, and he used what's called humility hands. Research calls it humility hands. Humility hands are when your hands are on your leg and they're resting. Humility, humble. humble. So he looked relaxed, calm, here to stay. You know, right. not tense I'm not in a rush, I'm here. I'm here, I'm, I'm your leader, right? Yeah. So he looked, quote unquote, presidential. So first, the runner stance. Second is, and this is in the first 10 they seconds were sitting. of the debate. They were, they were sitting. sitting. They were sitting next to each other. They weren't yes. on a podium. No. So here's your first snapshot of the debate. And you see Kennedy, very humility relaxed. hands, yes, relaxed. relaxed, sitting tall. And then you see Nixon, who's like <laughs> gripping the chair leave. arm, ready to leave. And we mm -hmm. see these cues, and people already made their decision. But people mm -hmm. who were listening didn't see any of that. Right. They heard the voice. They heard the voice. Yeah. Interesting. And so Nixon lost the debate to Kennedy. He lost the election to Kennedy. And he said in his memoirs, that's why is because of the cues I sent. And so for leaders, here's what we want to think about. One is relaxed, here to stay. So the more you can settle into your place, the distance, this is such a weird measurement, I want to see the biggest distance between your earlobe and your shoulder. The so reason, not like this. Yes, yes. Or because why? 
When we are confident, when we are winners, we take up as much space as possible, mm-hmm. right? We broaden our shoulders, we tilt our head towards the sky. Okay. Winners feel pride. So we look at the distance between someone's ear and shoulder, and we're like, oh, he looks, she looks confident. When someone hops on a video call, this is the mistake I see. Hi, everyone. Mm-hmm. Shoulders pinched up towards ears. Oh, wow. And we wonder why people aren't taking us seriously. We wonder why people are interrupting us. Is because this distance, if I'm like this, hey, everyone, happy Monday. <laughs> well, your tonality as well, but yeah. <laughs> right? Like if I start a video call like this. So um, today we're going to talk about some updates, and I'm going to go over some different <laughs> slides with you. And we're going to wait a few minutes while people log on. Oh, my. <laughs> right? Like, so it, horrible. If I'm on your team, are they? Is everyone just like? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no one gets. You, are you just yes. calling each other out on your social? Everyone's cues? a winner on my team. They're yeah. amazing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like we like we like play music. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, right. Of course, you can lean in sometimes. You can, but in that first impression, especially, right? right it's like, hey, good morning, everyone. Good to see you. So right. I want you to think about profile pictures, uh-huh. videos. I love chairs with armrests. Why? It helps our. Our shoulders stay grounded. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest one is taking up space. The second thing that happens that also gives you more vocal power. Mm. So if I were to do my this entire interview with my uh, shoulders up, it would look bizarre, (laughs) right? right? I would look scared. You'd be more closed. Yeah, it would be. And so if I tense my vocal cords right now, I'll begin to go into vocal fry. So vocal fry, have you heard this before? Yes. It's when your voice sounds like sizzling bacon. I just don't know. I'm not <laughs> sure. But sure. like I was just thinking about it. And if it's, <laughs> oh my goodness, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. And the reason why we'll accidentally go into fry is because we're literally clenching our vocal cords and it, they cannot get enough breath. Vocal fry, not to be gross, but vocal fry happens when our vocal cords rattle together. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're hearing is the rattling. That's why we don't like it. And so when you have space... You prevent vocal fry. If you hear yourself in vocal fry, here's the quickest fix you have. Speak louder. Right. So the best way to get rid of vocal fry is to just up your volume. It will push more air through your vocal Mm -hmm. cords and it makes them uh, hum. Yeah. If other people on your team are using vocal fry, just ask them to speak up. Speak a little louder. Yeah. Yeah. That will usually get them out of vocal fry. Okay. Little secret. Don't, Don't blame it on me, but that's a really easy way to... If you're interviewing someone... And they're in vocal fry, and you know it's going to drive your listeners crazy. Just like, you know, the audio, they just can't hear you. Can Could you speak a little bit louder? It will work.